What's up guys, it's Alda Anthony, and welcome back to the Civic Vlog that you hopefully know and hopefully love. And in today's video, we are installing a big shifter upgrade for my Honda Civic. Let's go. All right guys, so today's video is proudly sponsored by the guys over at K-Tuned and Circuit Hero. I wanna give a huge shout out to them and a big thank you for believing in the little guy and sending out some awesome goodies for me to install on the Honda Civic. Now without further ado, we have some boxes over here that we need to check out. So I feel like a kid on Christmas right now because I know what's in these boxes is going to make a huge difference in the driving experience on my Honda Civic. So we're gonna start with the Circuit Hero box first because it catches my eye and I love the 90s theme that it has going on here. So we're gonna pop this thing open on this side right here. Yes, this is exactly what I was looking for. So if you guys are catching on to the theme here, I'm upgrading the shifter on my Honda Civic, and this right here is an actual shifter plate. So instead of running a shifter boot, this replaces that, giving it a very, very clean look for my new shifter from K-Tune. I really like the finish on this. I believe this is aluminum, and it looks extremely, extremely high quality. I like that. Circuit Hero, rare goods for competition spirits, which is just a really cool touch. Now this right here is gonna be the rubber insulation piece that goes on the inside of this area right here, just to kind of finish it out and obviously keep you from catching your finger on there or anything like that because that is sharp on the inside. This is going to mount to the bottom of the existing shifter assembly. So all that plastic there, this is going to go right under the bottom, removing the old shift boot and giving you a very, very, very good look. So this is gonna be a complimentary piece to what's going on right here. So moving on to the meat and bones of today's install is going to be the K-Tuned Shifter X along with the black short five-speed shift knob for the B and D series Honda Civics. Now they seem to have sent me two of each product which wasn't an accident because I am going to be giving away one of these sets to a follower. Now, this is going to be something I'm gonna be doing on my Instagram. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, check out alldayanthony underscore, and I'm gonna go over all the rules once this video launches. So one lucky winner is gonna have the same exact shifter that I do, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as I will. Now, I'm also going to be giving away some of these extra goodies here that they sent out, including a keychain, a reservoir sock, and another keychain. So there's gonna be two prizes for this giveaway, so make sure to head to my Instagram, alldayanthony underscore, and follow me so you don't miss out on this giveaway opportunity. So with that said, let's go ahead and unbox these and show you what I got. All right, so first up is going to be the five-speed shift knob. Opening this up, and there we go. So this right here looks freaking awesome. I love the fit and finish on this. I love that they have K-Tuned uh, engraved into this along with the one, two, three, four, five, and reverse gear on the top. Now this guy is going to be replacing my beloved Skunk two-weighted shift knob that I've had for so many years. Now, fun fact, I've had this shift knob since 2006 when I got my very first Honda Civic and it hasn't left me yet. And it's definitely not going anywhere, but it's time to change things up with this guy right here. And I think that this is going to look awesome and totally complement the rest of the shifter. We have some zip ties in here along with a couple little grommets. So I don't know where these go just yet, but I believe that these go onto the bottom of the shifter here to tighten that thing down. Moving on to the main course here, we have the Shifter X. I like that they've included a little sticker here showing you how to install this with a link to the YouTube video that they have on their channel, which I might have to reference. Now here is going to be the bottom base assembly here, which is also adjustable. This thing looks freaking nuts, man. This looks so, so good. So you have your adjustment settings right here. You obviously have your ball joint right here, and then you have your aluminum plate. Now, if I remember correctly, I think I have to reuse my D-series plate because this is for a B-series, but no big deal because I'll still have most of the assembly here. Now we have some tools here along with some hardware, and then we have the actual arm, which everybody loves the look of. Now, a lot of people have knocked off this look because it looks so freaking good. This is the K-tuned arm here. That's just infamous and everybody knows it when they see it on the internet. And you have your adjustment settings with your little Allen bolts here. So you can raise this up or lower it to change the throw as needed. 
I love the way this looks, and I think this is gonna totally complement my interior, as well as give me a better shifter feel. I think there's nothing else in here except for, obviously, more stickers, which, again, I will be finding a place for those. So now that you see what you're getting when you pick up the Shifter X, we have to move on to the heavy lifting of this install. And by heavy lifting, I mean the car's already in the air, so we're halfway there. So you wanna make sure to jack up the car and give yourself plenty of space to work underneath it. Now, on my car, I have the Yonaka mid-pipe as well as the stock cat. I'm hoping I don't have to remove those and I'll be able to drop the shifter assembly without having to unbolt everything. But if it happens, then I'm prepared to do that with the right tools. So you wanna get the car in the air first, get your jack stands under the car on the pinch welds to provide a safe space to be able to do this. I've already removed the interior plastics, so I'm going to be good to go. Now with that said, let's go ahead, hop into the car and show you what I'm working on. So as you guys know, I hate working on the garage floor with little to no light. So if you want to see this video done on a lift with plenty of light showing you everything that's going on, head to Ktune's YouTube channel and watch their BD series install on the Shifter X. But I have a light here. We're going to be able to slide underneath the car and I'll show you guys what I'm working on. So right above the exhaust, if you can see this right here, you'll see we have our whole shifter linkage. We have to drop this right here, as well as these bolts up here, which I believe are all 10s or 12s. Now this shift linkage follows all the way down past your cat to right here. We are not dropping this bar right here. We are dropping the bar with the 12 on it that you'll see that I already have an upgraded shifter bushing on. We're gonna be dropping that, letting this just kind of hang down to the side, but following that and removing all of that right here. So I've got a little bit of rust on here. Might be able to clean that up a little bit, but other than that, it's just gonna be this bolt right here, which I can as either a 10 or a 12, then dropping the rest of everything else, and it should be able to drop down. Pull right out, and this will be freed up. So there we go. Well, I'm gonna drop on my face is what it's gonna do. And so that's free, but you'll see that I already have these red shifter bushings on here. So um, these are polyurethane. These are what I was talking about in one of my previous videos, and I actually really, really like these. They're really cheap. I wanna say I paid, I think it was like 15 bucks for the front and rear, but I only installed the front because I couldn't get the rear off. So um, we might get the rear on today. I don't know, we'll have to see, but um, I do like these bushings for any reference, and I will put the link down in the description. So. Let's keep moving on. We're gonna be cracking this guy loose. Get the rest off by hand. So this stuff's just gonna kinda hang around here. It's not a big deal. We'll be able to get this loosened up. Uh, and now I have those 12 millimeter bolts on this other side right here. Is it gonna fit? Is it gonna fit? Yes, 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 I didn't have to drop the exhaust. All right, so the biggest takeaway from this process is that if you say enough cuss words and bust a few knuckles, things will work out for you in life. So we got this thing freed up. It is absolutely filthy, as you can see from my hands. Uh, so we're gonna clean this up, get this disassembled here from the bottom. And while this is off, we might be able to get that new polyurethane bushing on here as well, which I am pumped for. So um, that's that, guys. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You may have to remove your exhaust. You may not have to remove your exhaust. I was able to kind of push it to the side and wiggle it out and get it free. So uh, now let's get to work. All right, here's the trick. Needle nose pliers, clamp onto one side, and then just kind of take it slow with a little socket here, and that'll free that up. There we go. Now we just need to get this thing all cleaned up and looking nice and new again. All right, so while I'm here, I'm gonna to try to see if I can get this old shifter bushing off. Now the hardest part about this is obviously when it's on the car, so you always wanna be able to remove this if you're doing shifter bushings, um, but then getting it over this lip here. So you can see that this thing is pretty floppy, but it's not deteriorated, so it's not in the worst condition ever. So we just need to yank this off, find a good angle, just yank the damn thing like that. And this, we're going to try to get on, this is, this is the hard part. Wiggle it down. Sweet. Nice. All right. That's that, and that's on there. Um, way more stiff, so cool, cool. And then this bracket, once we go to install it, that's gonna go just right around the outside here. We can just kind of push that in 
and you'll see that that fits on there uh, just like the OEM one. So cool, I'm excited. That will make a difference as well. So all these little things do add up to a better shifting experience. All right, so here's our bottom bracket. This is the aluminum plate that does not fit. So if I'll show you guys here, when we slide that through, you can see that this plate does not line up, right? It's got this outside lip here. If you wanted to trim it, I suppose that you could, but most people just end up using the stock plate or using the OEM plate instead of keeping this. So uh, if you have a B series car, um, this will be a direct fit and this will slide right in. But if you have a D series like me, you'll reuse that existing bracket. So we need to pop this one off, exchange it for that one, and we should be good to go. All right, so we're ready to slide this in since we have the plate on here now. So you're just gonna flip this over, slide this up and through, and you're gonna apply a little bit of force because you gotta get that bushing inside the actual metal there. So you're gonna keep pressing until it gets all the way in there. And we're just about there. All right, and then from there, we're gonna slide in our bolts, get our nuts started. And this is the hardware that comes from K-Tuned as well. So you're not reusing the existing hardware that was all super janky before. Ball joints in there, just where it should be. Ready to get this, uh, this thing installed here. All right, so back underneath the dark car. Get up in there. There we go. All right, so we're gonna start down here. Too far. GoPro's falling off my head. Next up here is going to be the shifter plate from Circuit Hero. So uh, we're gonna get the old shift boot off underneath here, which is unfortunate because it was kind of minty and you can run this shifter setup with a shift boot. If you wanna do that, you totally can. I just think it's gonna be a cleaner look having the shift plate and I'll be able to make constant adjustments as needed because when you do a shift boot, it kind of locks you out of one adjustment setting that you wouldn't be able to do. So shift plates, freaking amazing, look awesome. Uh, shift boots, still great, just not as ideal for this particular setup. So, um, all right, let's get this thing off. Voila. All right, so next up is going to be this little gasket material that's gonna go around the inside of the Circuit Hero shift plate. So. Uh, we're just gonna start it, probably have the separation up top there since it's gonna be less visible than down here. Um, so it's gotta get it started and it should start working its way on. You just gotta apply just a decent amount of pressure. Holy crap. All right, quick update. I've spent probably 30 minutes trying to get this thing on here. It is not easy. So um, it takes a lot of, uh, a lot of effort. Um, having one of these kind of pop clip tools helps a lot because then you can kind of open up the seal as you're kind of wrapping it around. Uh, the problem is, is that there's glue in there. I used a heat gun, I kind of started heating it up, but I noticed that the glue started to you know, soften up and was starting to bond together. So uh, don't do that, don't do that. Just try to get it on uh, by hand. And what I'm kind of doing here is I'm just kind of guiding it along and picking up from the backside with this little tool and kind of trying to tuck it around. It is super tedious. It's gonna take you um, quite some time to do, uh, but once you kind of get it, once you get the hang of it, you'll kind of see how it starts going on there. Um, just make sure to, um, make sure you get your corners seated, right? Cause you wanna pull in your corners cause you don't want those lifting up. So once you get this wrapped all the way around, um, that's when you'll be able to just make your trim here um, and then cut it and then you should be good to go. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a heat gun, heat it up and then get, the, get, get that glue to really, really stick. So um, tedious, I kind of wish this was already on here, but you know what, it is what it is. So uh, we're almost finished. All right, so it's pretty easy. Literally just slides right into the existing clips and then it's gonna line up, flip it over. Oh dude, that looks freaking awesome. Holy crap. Dude, that looks freaking killer, man. Wow. All right, so from here, we're gonna get the car back down on the ground and that way we'll be able to start adjusting the K-Tune shifter, get this installed, and then go take it for a rip. 
So I wanted to show you guys really quick here the adjustment settings just before I get it on the car because you guys won't be able to see it. Um, but all you have to do is just loosen up these Allens here and you can raise this or lower it as needed. So that would be your shortest uh, shifting position and then this would be your tallest shifting position. Now what you want to do though is you want to raise this in the meantime because we do need to have access to these Allen bolts. So I'm just going to get it to a setting that looks pretty good and just kind of tighten it down just temporarily because uh, we need to get this on the car first. And so you have one bolt here and then you have your two bolts back there that are gonna lock that in place. All right, temporarily. All right, so where do I begin? As you guys saw, when I was shifting the car, something just didn't quite feel right. Like it wasn't getting into first gear, it wasn't getting into third, and it wasn't getting into fifth properly. So I was sitting there troubleshooting in my head, you know, what could it be, why isn't it going in? And then it hit me that something could be obstructing the actual shifting. And so I got back into the car, disassembled everything, and this is what I found. So on the actual shift linkage, you have your counterweights or whatever you'd like to call them. If I get underneath here, if I grab the shifter, you'll see that this piece of metal right here, when sliding this in, hits. It hits that right there, there's not enough clearance. So going back this way, totally fine. Going this way, not good. It is catching and is not allowing me to go all the way into gear. So with that said, I am going to be dremeling this thing off right here. So I'm just gonna grab a metal bit, saw this off and saw this piece of counterweight on. I'm gonna leave this one on, but this one's gotta go in order for me to have clearance. I wasn't expecting this. I didn't know that this was even a thing, but I think that this is a shifter that's for all B and D series uh, cars. And so I think that some of them don't account for this little piece right here. So we're gonna grab our Dremel, get this thing sawed off. Well, there's a severe lack of room in here, but I'm just gonna roll it. Holy crap, this thing is hot. So I got that counterweight removed. All I did was just dremel it from one side and remove the welds. And so uh, now we should be good to go without any type of clearance issue. So um, you may have to do this. If you install this shifter and you have the same exact shift linkage that I do, and it's hitting the shift linkage, um, you might have to dremel this thing off. So just be prepared. So we're gonna get everything buttoned back up just like before, and then we should be able to have some good clearance. So let's do it. All right, quick check before I eat my own words. Let's just see how this is shifting now. Clutch in. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there we go. All right, so where were we? So putting this in gear, that is literally 100 times better. That's finally in gear. That's not like a question of whether it's in gear, it is in gear. Wow, that feels freaking amazing. Okay, so I don't want it this high. Obviously, we're gonna drop it down because my hand is about to touch this thing here. So I don't know if I like the throws. Those are, how do I say this? That's not really that long. We can drop it down a little bit. We can shorten it up just a tad. So right now I wanna say we're probably a little over three and a half. So we'll bring it down just a little bit and see if I like it just a little more down. But that feels, it feels freaking amazing though. Drops right over the top. Perfect. Oh, dude. Dude, it's not even in all the way yet. I'm already excited. Holy crap. That goes in, I think those go on the outers, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Dude. Clears it, no problems. Holy hell. Man, I am so excited. God, that looks good. Dude, that looks so, so, so good. All right, time for the center console. Now, for anybody wondering, I did do a leather wrap over the top of this. That's why it looks a lot better than stock. Um, and it's been on there for, what, roughly nine months or so, and it still looks freaking awesome. So if anybody ever wants to do a leather wrap on the top of that, um, do it, because they look really, really good. So, all right, let's drop this in. And man, man, oh man, I am so excited. Just like that. All right guys, so everything is sewed back up and I can't wait to show you what this looks like because it looks absolutely killer. Check that out, man. 
I didn't think I was gonna like that shift knob as much as I do, but it seriously looks and feels incredible. The little notches in there from the engravings actually make a huge difference in terms of like the grip and feel, and I just absolutely love it. So I want to go for a drive tonight. However, I promised my wife that we were doing pizza night, so I will have to see you guys in the morning. All right, guys, good morning and welcome back. So we're gonna be taking the Civic out for its first drive after installing the K-Tune shifter, but first I just want to show it off one more time because I think this thing looks so freaking good. I mean, it really sets off the interior. Seeing that shifter right in the middle there, I know some people don't like the look, but I personally love it. And the way it feels, it's one of those things you gotta try it for yourself to see what I'm talking about because it does feel amazing. So the black really complements kind of the color scheme I'm going for here and that Circuit Hero plate really just kind of sets off that entire finish and really ties everything together. So I'm super pumped to get in the car, take it for a drive, so I'll see you guys on the road. All right guys, so I just drove to a nearby parking lot just to make sure everything was shifting properly and whatnot. And in those 30 seconds, holy does this thing make a difference i i can't even describe it i only got to like third gear and this thing feels freaking incredible i'm not exaggerating this this is 100 percent honesty when k-tune reached out and said that this would improve my driving experience no shit, man they weren't kidding this feels freaking incredible it's so much notchier it's so much more confirming it's so much firmer really and i i can't imagine this being any better I mean, unless you have the whole K-Tune shifter box with obviously a, a K-motor, but this for a B and D series car, holy shit, man, holy shit. It feels so freaking good. Okay, enough talking, let's get on the road. So I got a little bit of vibration noise uh, coming from it. That could probably be fixed, maybe a little bit of Loctite on the uh, on the actual fasteners. Um, but other than that though, I mean, that felt so freaking solid. In terms of the driving experience, this is probably right up there with the steering wheel. You guys know that my favorite mod on here is the S2000 steering wheel, but being able to grab this shifter and have it feel so tight, that's, that's money. Yeah. Wow. Now, something else that people recommended upgrading was the actual shifter spring, which is located on the top of the transmission. And what that is, it's a firmer spring that gives you a little bit better feedback within the shifter, meaning that when it returns to you, it's more, uh, I don't want to say spring loaded, I guess you could say. It's just stiffer. It's a stiffer spring. So getting into gear will actually feel stiffer. The return will feel stiffer as well. So that might be something I also install in the near future because it's really simple and like really cheap. I think it's like 20 bucks or so. Um, but that would also improve the driving experience for sure in terms of the way the gearbox feels. Because I mean, guys, stock, this D16 Y8 gearbox, the Y7 gearbox, the, even the B16 gearbox, feel pretty sloppy. They don't feel extremely tight. So doing an upgrade like this really gives you, I don't wanna call it a race car feel, but it gives you a higher end car feel. It just makes the car feel better. And I would argue to say that this feels just as notchy as probably my Evo. And my Evo is extremely notchy and this just feels just fantastic. as hell but I mean that is still just a blast all right guys so needless to say this is another mod that you can add to your underpowered or even overpowered Honda to improve your driving experience I want to give a huge shout out to K-Tune for sending not one but two of these kits in which one of these I will be giving away and I also want to give a huge shout out to Circuit Hero for sending out this shift plate as well I'm gonna include all the links down in the description so you guys can find these for yourself but trust me on this, I would not do a review, I would not accept product unless I believed in it, and this is one hell of a shifter setup. So you have my seal of approval on this setup, and I guarantee that you'll love driving your car with this. So as always, if you guys like this content and like the Civic content, make sure you give me a big thumbs up, subscribe down below for more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's all to Anthony. Peace.